All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I do hope you lot are doing oh so well, and welcome to today's match review. Match review, yes, it is a match review. Welcome to today's video, which is a match review on Chelsea's 2 0 home win against Brighton in the Premier League. You must excuse me for today, I'm a little bit hungover because, yes, I went to the game yesterday. And I went out afterwards, shout out to the Londoners blue lot, and uh, I was hanging out with George Benson and Louis Benevente, had a lot of fun. I'm a little bit delicate, but Chelsea got the win, and there's a lot to discuss in today's video. So Chelsea were without a Premier League home win this season, and Chelsea were also without a clean sheet under Frank Lampard. So to secure these two elusive gems in the Premier League this weekend was excellent for super Frankie Lampard and his young blues. Sure, Brighton might have not been the most threatening of opposition, but Chelsea do have a few Achilles heels, soft underbelly in certain parts of the game. Anything can happen in football, especially with Chelsea. So there was now and again moments of uncertainty, but generally Chelsea dominated this game. So I want to talk about how the game went down and some key factors, so let's bring up that old analysis screen. Right, so on the graphic next to me, I've used who scored match center yet again, as it is a comprehensive graphic that shows you a lot about the game. Graham Potter's Brighton employed their usual 3-4-3 formation, and there's a few good players in there, but generally they were quite passive throughout this game, but that formation and tactical approach does afford them to do progressive attacking moves when they get the chance. But the truth is they didn't get the chance that much, but they did have a crack. They had a lot of possession considering they're away at Stamford Bridge. They do try and play without the ball. They put in a lot of tackles and generally they played okay in many respects. I didn't find it that surprising that they won more aerial duels than Chelsea, but I did find it more surprising that they completed more dribbles, but maybe that had something to do with the personnel on the pitch for Chelsea. You can imagine if someone like Callum hudson Doy started, or Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who's obviously injured, or Mateo Kovacic, Chelsea will be completing a lot, lot more dribbles, or even Christian Pulisic, which we'll talk about in a moment. So Frank Lampard deployed a 4-3-3 for Chelsea. For a lot of people, the lineup was a bit underwhelming, and I guess injuries had a part to do with it. Kante still injured. Um, the front three, basically, Tammy Abraham started which people expected but to have both Willian and Pedro on both wings was a little bit uninspiring maybe but certainly they've combined very well over the recent years against this kind of opposition People are frustrated with that. Callum hudson Adoy obviously came off the bench and he looks very, very good. So he couldn't have started the game because he's only just played 90 minutes midweek and he's barely caught up to match fitness yet. But people are frustrated that Christian Pulisic didn't start. Now, this is an interesting one. This is the kind of game that you think, yes, he should be starting in this easy opposition at home and he should be well rested for this game. But the truth is, as a fan, as a spectator, you can only speculate really what the score is. At the end of the day, this is probably Willian and Pedro's maybe last season at Chelsea Football Club for both of them. So it's a swan song, they are very experienced and they're seeing Frank Lampard through his early turbulent stages at the club and really that makes a lot of sense. Willian was quite good in this game, he's very hard working, Pedro's obviously a very industrious, hard working player. So if you were in Frank Lampard's position, you know you've got a very young player in Christian Pulisic who's just touched down in this country league team and he's going to take some time to bed in when you've got two very senior, very professional, experienced players who are seeing out the end of their contracts, like I said, in their swan song. So it kind of makes sense to play them for a little bit, certainly at the beginning, and maybe circulate Pulisic in when someone like hudson Adoy is very acquainted to English football. So I wouldn't worry too much when it comes to the whole Christian Pulisic situation. I feel he's got a big future at Chelsea, and before the end, when Chelsea do sell Willian, sell Pedro, rather they just get released because their contracts have expired. Christian Pulisic is the next man to step up and we all know he's a very talented player. He just needs to get his head down and he needs to integrate. And there's also speculation that he's isolated from the camp, but I think we can put that to bed when we've seen the recent training videos of him dancing around with Tammy Abraham and it's all smiles. Anyway, I digress, back to the game. So as a front three of William Pedro 
and Tammy Abraham in a midfield free of Mason Mount, Jorginho and Ross Barkley. Emerson is still injured so Alonso came in at left back, Espelicueta played in at right back, obviously Reese James was very impressive midweek but he did a lot of running and, and like Hudson Adoy he needs to sort of keep up to match fitness so I fully expected Espelicueta to start in this game and Chelsea enjoyed a pretty smart looking centre back partnership of Fakayo Tomore and Andreas Christensen. Tamori has been one of the revelations of this season. He's an excellent player. I know he was superb from Derby and why he won Derby's player of the season. To be honest, when Rudiger's back fit, you can imagine that starting partnership being Rudiger and Tamori, and obviously Kepa and Goal, who didn't really have much to do in this game, apart from a save at the end. So let's touch on player performances a little bit. Very impressive with Tamori, his recovery pace, evident yet again. Andreas Christensen did make a few interceptions going forward, which is quite impressive. He sometimes can look wobbly in maybe higher profile games, but he was pretty good here. But like I said, when Rudiger's fit, I fully expect him to come in and probably take Christensen's place. As for the quote, it's pretty solid. He's slowly developing a little bit of form back, but nothing like this sort of as P of old. But he was fine in this game, so, you know, meh. Now, Marcus Alonso, I know who scored's only given him a 7.1 on this rating. Maybe that's something to do with his yellow card, but I actually think he's been pretty good. He's obviously taken a lot of stick and criticism, Marcus Alonso, in the conventional left back system because we all know he's got very poor recovery pace, therefore, he's a much better left left wing back but you know what he's been good he's been showing his strength and dominance in the air and hold up he's a big guy um, Marcus Alonso and Chelsea need that sometimes winning you know aerial duels and just generally not being too weak on the ball and he's been very confident recently maybe it's because he's playing lower level opposition and he knows he's won a Premier League so maybe that's carrying him a bit better but it actually had a lot of benefit having his senior presence on the pitch at times and kudos to him I'm not his biggest fan as a normal left back and he absolutely for me it should be um, Emerson in that spot when fit but fair play to him he's done well when he's come in. Mason Mount was superb in this game for me it's really nice that he has that versatility of playing a lot of places in midfield as well as left wing very industrious obviously he made the play that won the penalty that broke the deadlock that saw Chelsea into the W for this game so really he was such a key figure in this game and there was an excellent game for Mason Mount. Ross Barkley was a little bit frustrating um, I know Frank Lampard really likes him as does Gareth Southgate actually coaches do seem to like him I think he's quite strong fast very technically skillful and hard-working but <laughs> that's a lot of praise but the truth is he's often disappoints certainly lately now I don't want to slate Ross Barkley I'm not of that inclination but he is very talented you can see him pick up the ball retain possession often dribble around the 18 yard box make something happen he's very very talented lad he's got a lot in his locker but in many games he tries to, I mean, he tries to overplay it he doesn't make the pass quick enough or you know the recent controversy with the penalty just don't didn't help him out really. I'm very much in the camp how I think Ross Barkley is a useful squad player and anyone that just wants to sell him for the sake of it, I feel like it's a bad idea. He is very talented, he's good at combinations and he's used to playing with good players now. You've seen him combine with some of Chelsea's best over the last couple of years. And obviously he's been a beast in pre-season. He's played very good for England and over the last couple of years he's had great moments for Chelsea. Something needs to be ironed out of his game. He probably isn't in Chelsea's starting eleven when everyone's fit but he's absolutely a useful squad player and he was just frustrated a little bit in this game. Okay so as you can see who scored has given a big star rating to Jorginho who for me was the man of the match. Um, superb on the ball, Stamford Bridge singing his name yet again which is just lovely to see. He obviously picked up the penalty this time and everyone had a sigh of relief because he's a, you know, he's a cool operator, he's an absolute killer on that penalty spot, he waits for the keeper to move and I don't think he even moved this time, he just absolutely, he's got no respect for goalkeepers, Jorginho. But he had a superb game, he was really good under the press, he's superb at playing out, obviously that's been his game for a long time at Napoli as well. Passes very quickly, he's a lot more physical than he used to be. His defensive numbers and metrics this season are very good, as they actually were last season, it's just deceptive the way he plays. He's a superb asset, Frank Lampard keeps commenting on why Jorginho's a great player for him and he's often talking about his leadership qualities which is really important in this young Chelsea side. So. Big up Jorginho, he's been excellent for Chelsea. Tammy Abraham had a good game, in my opinion. He ran the channels, he was physical, he was a nuisance, had a couple of chances. Um, another goal will come soon, but he'll be frustrated it didn't come in this game. Pedro is probably a bit underwhelming, like I said, a bit meh. 
but he's very industrious. He eventually came off for Callum Hudson-Odoi. Callum Hudson-Odoi came on and immediately looked dangerous. He was quite close to me where I was sitting and I was watching him make a few incisive plays. He combines with Willian really well actually. He did a couple of balls and movements that basically broke down Brighton. It was a completely new question being asked of them and he really does bring something different Callum Hudson-Odoi. So it's an incredibly exciting prospect to have him back hopefully in the starting 11 very very soon. So he came on and he did light up the pitch. Willian was decent as well. He's never perfect. He still took a corner and like hit the first man I think at one point when Mount was on the pitch. Mount was taking corners up to that. He really shouldn't be anywhere near corners at the moment. Very very frustrating. But he's a very hard worker. My issue with Willian is all coaches love him. So you've got to see something there. Like he always gets played by every single Chelsea coach. Now, you might be a fan that criticises William, but at the end of the day, you probably don't have the credentials of these multiple Chelsea coaches <laughs> that play William. So there's something there. He's hardworking. Obviously, he's very technical and very, very talented. My issue is he kind of like shrugs his shoulders and throws his arms up in the air. That's the kind of thing I don't like to see. Like when he's frustrated, he'll slump down and throw his arms up in the air in despair. No, don't do that. You don't get the young players to do that. When Mason Mount makes a mistake, by the time Willian's hands have come down from throwing them up in the air in frustration, Mason Mount's already run eight yards to, you know, fix the error that he's done. But I'm not hating on Willian. He scored a goal. He got a deflection, but it was a big goal. It was an important goal for Chelsea in this game. So Willian had a good performance. Let's get rid of the analysis screen and talk a little bit more about this game. Like I said in my match preview, Chelsea's Achilles heel are set pieces, corners and free kicks. There was a couple of moments when Chelsea were uh, trying to defend set pieces and free kicks and no one felt safe. And this is the thing, in a game in open play where Chelsea were dominating, they were comfortable, you still don't feel safe because Chelsea as a team have offered nothing to the fan base to make them feel safe when just doing general set piece defending. Brighton also hit the woodwork which would have been a really bad time, frustrating for them to score a goal. But then again, so did Chelsea, this happens in football. If Chelsea were just a little bit more resolute with defending set pieces, they'll be looking better and better and better. And with the return of Emerson, Golo Kante, Antonio Rudiger, Callum Hudson Odoi into the starting lineup. Chelsea are looking like a very, very good prospect as a team, and they can hopefully build on that and look very good indeed. So, all positives for Chelsea. Really, people are just asking the question about Christian Pulisic. The point is, he's a Chelsea player, he's a talented player, he's training with the squad, he seems to enjoy himself in training. Even if he's come out and said he's frustrated that he's not playing, it's okay, it's just what's happening at the moment. It's Frank Lampard's decision and why Chelsea are winning games with clean sheets. Everyone just needs to go with it. He will be integrated into the team. Willian and Pedro won't be at the club forever. And everything is going to be all right. <laughs> right, guys, I'm going to round up this video. But I quickly want to remind you guys to subscribe to my sister channel, Yan Plays. If you enjoy video games and FIFA 20 Chelsea career mode, which you do, right? Go and subscribe to it. It's, um, it's the featured channel on this channel, Football Therapy, or just search Yan Plays. Super simple. Go and subscribe. Support me. Go and check out the hilarious... FIFA 20 videos. If you have enjoyed this video, please do like the video, guys. Why not subscribe to this channel if you're new? And you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter at Football Yannick. I'm going to keep it moving, boys and girls. You enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'm going to get it how I'm living. I'm going to walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me back.